Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here. I'm going to be going after two old capacitors in this radio that I missed during my earlier gallivants around the radio. So one of them is uh, right here, and the other one is, is up, uh, up high on the underside of the antenna transformer. So I'm going to do the tough one first. That's this one. You can probably barely see it in the camera here. And, uh, it's, got a, it's got a wire that's looping back out of sight on like one lead. The other lead must go down here where I can probably trace it. Probably down to that tube socket there. Um, let's get the close-up camera on here. See what we can see with it. down right at the end of the capacitor and you can see a wire coming out of it an uninsulated wire and then it disappears <laughs> down that crack there um, I don't know how I'm going to see where that's going oh boy so clearly what I got to do here is I got to cut this wire preserve most of the wire and hook up to it I'm going to guess it's not shorting to anything, even though it's, wow, it's pretty close to this uh, aluminum can here. Uh, looks like it once had some insulation on it, or that's goop that's leaked out of the out of the capacitor here. Okay, on that end, that's going to be tight. Anyway, uh, the other end of it. Wiggle it again. So you can see it going down, down to a tube, uh, a tube socket uh, terminal. So again, I think I'm going to try to solder to the wire there rather than go all the way down, but I can always change my mind part way through it. So that's the deal. That's the deal with this. Okay. Okay, first we'll cut this wire here. You know, I don't even need to test this old capacitor. It's just a curiosity. Anyway. I'm going to make my life easier by by having a cat jump up here with me. That's what I'm going to have. <laughs> well, hello, Shadow. What's going on today? Today, today, today we're waiting for a lot of bad weather to start. I'm going to do the same thing down here. That's what we're waiting for. Shadow's never been outside, but most recently we have started, I wouldn't chew on a wire, okay? The radio's off and everything, but just the same. Don't stick wires in your mouth. Never stick a wire in your mouth. When I was a kid, my friends used to test 9-volt batteries by sticking them on their tongues. And uh, they'd always say, oh, that yeah, tastes like metal. And I used to think, God, it just doesn't sound like a good idea. Consequently, I've never done the 9 volt battery tongue test.
it's as bad as the rest. Looks like a really poorly made Havana cigar. Like really poorly made. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm insulting all those highly skilled cigar makers. Okay, so the wire I gotta go on is down here. The other one. wire down here a little bit. There we go. Useless tape there. There's one. That's out in the clear now. Hey, maybe I can figure out what, what capacitor this actually is. Why don't we do that? Let's do that, because I can do it. Let's do it, because I can do it. just mean I have to look at the schematic here briefly. Um, so that's going to pin number... Two A three, I think it was, or two A something. Oh boy! So this is a type of tube that's got uh, fat pins for the heater. I'm trying to recognize which pins look fat. Looks like those two there. So if that's the case, that's one, two, three. Pin number four on a 2A3, I think it is. Okay, let me see if I can get the schematic up here easy enough. Okay, so here's the uh, schematic, and if we look at the output tube, 2A5, and we look at pin number four, I checked in my tube manual, pin four is this grid, pin four comes out and goes straight to this capacitor. 0.02, so that's what I've got. I've got a 0.02. If you go just a little bit further down the way, we see the the uh, tone capacitor, which I changed earlier. I believe I put a 0.05 in or something of that sort. And it's calling for a 0.005, I see on the, here. So I'm going to change this one out too, to its correct to its correct amount. Way to go. Shadow just jumped over my cup of coffee here in the shop. Ooh scary stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll do uh, 0.02 here and 0 0.005 there. Okay, so that's a 0 0.02 in here, 0 0.005. I'm going to replace this one here with a so 0 0.02. Okay, Get this one here. this wire here. I don't know if you can hear my cat purring or not.
finally getting there. Let's try to lock these wires together here. <laughs> the angles are perfectly wrong. solder that first. What do you say, Kat? Solder first? Yeah. So the weather that's coming today is mostly rain and mostly rain. Late tonight, this evening, it's going to switch to snow. Snow, ice pellets, or frozen rain, nobody knows. And then we're going to get 15 centimeters of whatever it is, uh, ice pellets or uh, or snow, or if it's a rain, of course it won't be 15 centimeters of it, but it's going to be quite cold, about minus 5, so I'm pretty sure to get, I don't even want to say it, pretty sure to get, that's for sure. Kind of disappointing, you know, it's the middle of April now. solder here. Where's this? Let's play that game. How much you want to bet it's behind you? I bet you it's behind you. Uh, <laughs> look at, see? You were hiding it. I'm on to you, cat. I got you figured out. I got you figured out more than you got me figured out. That's for sure. Wouldn't you agree? She's watching the end of the solder. <laughs> it looks a lot like a tail. There's a possible tail action here. Snip away there, buddy. That's right. Got some good old lead fumes there for you. you gotta do a lot of sniffing to catch up to me. I'm frightened to think of how much lead I've inhaled from soldering over the years. Now I'm pulling on this wire, which appears to be bare, on the gamble that it can't short against anything in there. And I'm not knocking off insulation that I can't see. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Okay, now I'll try and grab that at the right height. Nope. Okay. Pulling on that, okay. What are you doing over here? what she's working on and I'm working on this. See, we're both working away. Okay, I'm going to stick my elbow in front of the camera because there's not many options here. That's good. Off the X 
access. It's getting in the way. Again, I'm just trying to loop one wire around the other and try to pinch pinch one down to get some kind of mechanical grip here. So again, I'm not the uh, best not the best solderer in the world, that's for sure. separate these two wires while I'm doing all that. I'm working on this little metal stick while my cat's working on a wooden stick. Oh, nope, she's gone. She gave up. Solder that. Okay on that one. There we are. Okay, okay. How many okays? Many, many okays. Lots of okays. Next one. I 
next one's right up here. Okay, so we're out here on this antenna coil now, and uh, here's a capacitor right here, 0 0.05, that all looks right, and it's connected to a resistor here, 2 meg resistor right here. So we can always take a look at this resistor too, and that's it. So 0 0.05 is the size, and uh, one side grounded. The other side goes to this resistor. Okay. Okay. So here's the capacitor here. Here's the resistor. Let's check and see if this is a 2 meg resistor or not. And, uh, it's going to be 2 megs or more, I would imagine. Body and dot. Okay, that's the way you read the code on these guys. Body. Body is two. So this should start with a two. And instead it's starting with a three. That's a whole two meg, three meg. That's an extra meg. That's too much. So this guy's going two. I'm going to get rid of him. We'll put in what this schematic shows. A two. Seems to me a three in this position is not so good. So we can actually like either hang a desolder that, and make it pop out, cut it here. Stiff, there's a very very stiff wire. I'll cut it and leave a tail in case I want it. And my soldering iron's still hot. soldering iron starts to slide off. It's because it's melting the solder. Here we go. Take a long time. Come on. I'm assuming these are just shoved in here. Uh, maybe not. No, it's not going to come off like that. I'm wiggling this terminal too much. That's, that's not good. So we're just going to nip it off. This is right to the uh, right to the chassis. There it is. Um, sorry, this is a little out of focus here. Uh, let me switch to the other camera. So, all I've done here is I peeled back the paper on this capacitor. The first thing you find is this huge void where the intention, obviously, of the maker was to have, uh, since this black tarry compound, fill fill this thing I, I really don't know how they did this because you have to wrap it but anyway it didn't work they, they, you can look right in you can see paper in there you can see it looks like a metal the metal uh, the metal part so, manufacturing defect the resistor you see body and dot so you see uh, let me get in the camera here body and dot red black black you, oh red two 
black zero, so 20. 20. Oh, the black on the end isn't the black. <laughs> it's, it's black that's leaked out of the uh, capacitor. So body end dot, this really should be green on the end. I think. Maybe not. No, that, that, I don't know. Ooh, who knows? <laughs> anyway, it is what it is on the schematic. Great stuff. We're looking at somebody's handiwork from a hundred years ago almost. When we look at these things. High tech, high tech work too. So uh, what was this going to be? This was going to be a a what? I can't remember here. Let me just peek. 0.05. Okay, 0.05. Point oh five here. Oh, 0.05 and a 2. 2. A two, a two, a two. How about a twenty-two? So we want to, we wanted a two megohm. That would be red, black, uh, green, red, black, green. I gotta hunt, hunt around for parts here. Got the uh, capacitor sitting there, ready to be soldered. And if I could only find my solder, uh, there it is. Can't blame it on shadow this time. close to the chassis. Hard to get the heat sometimes. Oh, that's good. I got it. Okay, so this guy's going to come up. It certainly is soldered. I can just pull this up. Come on. Ow, 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 ow. Still hot. There we go. Just make this connection and we're done. There we go. two kinds of viewers. I don't know what kind you are. I got some viewers who like seeing all this work uh, in real time as I do it. I 
get lots of uh, compl compliments about that. <laughs> Even though sometimes it must be frustrating to watch. It's frustrating to do. Then I have others who are congratulating me if I kind of speed it up, edit things out. So I'm, I'm a little remiss here. I my, uh, have had a little bit of a change in my life, which is allowing me to spend more time in the shop, which ultimately will generate more video hours per day. I'm already pushing it. You know, I'm, I'm putting an hour to an hour and a half's worth of video up every day. That's just, wow, that's a lot. Uh, I don't mean it's not a lot for me to make. It's a lot for people to watch. So, so hey, so I encourage you, uh, and you're probably doing this. Skip ahead, uh, run the video on high speed, and stuff like that. Compensate. If you don't like watching all the nitty gritty. Okay, talking about nitty gritty, nitty gritty. We're gonna turn this baby on now. You know, oh no, one more. I got one more. I got one more. I gotta do this one here with the point zero zero two or zero zero five. What was it? It was zero zero five. Okay. Before I destroy that terminal by wiggling it so much, something breaks off somewhere back there. I'm going to solder this. some doubts about how much this tone control is going to work. This is the tone control capacitor here. Based on my fooling with it earlier, but let's put the right size in anyway. Get in the right size. Okay, now I think I think that's everything. Okay, uh, we're gonna test the radio. We got an interesting test. We're gonna test the radio and test a couple antennas at the same time. Here, set and ready. I believe so. Volume down. Switch off. Power on. Here we go. Switch it on. Okay, we have no antenna connected right now. Turn it up. Starting up on. Uh, Reduced power. You can see the light up there. Oh, 
once again, just in case. Everything seems fine. Now those capacitors, uh, they may have affected this radio's tuning. I hope not. We'll find out. But the real issue is, is the radio working? Did I mess it up? And then we're going to play around with two loop antennas to compare them. So radio appears to be working. Let's go on full here. oscillation in this radio for sure. For sure? <laughs> I don't know. Won't worry about the knocking sound right now. sound like a <laughs> problem with the radio. Hey, motor boating. Let's set it to around. Look at that. This is now receiving with this piece of wire. Okay, let's try a couple antennas here. I'm going to jack up my I thought there was a station there. I'm sure there was. So here's one antenna. Just this antenna. The way this one works, I think I've had it on camera here a few times, is you can use it like this without hooking up any wires to an adjacent radio, but the radio has to have its own little loop antenna inside it. And you just put this up beside the, the other radio. Just like my big loop antenna, you have to tune this. This works on exactly the same principles. It's the same antenna, just different dimensions. Okay, so we tune it in, presto. So to use a wire, to use a wire, on the back here is a plug. And this, by the way, I should really, so just in case you're interested, this is made by Texan. This is the AN100. Not very expensive, but we're going to compare it to my big and dumb looking uh, personal personal loop antenna do you have a personal loop antenna I have a personal loop antenna oh, pretty quiet so far okay flip this around this way okay. tune it Now, when, when you're tuning something like this, the uh, radio has an AVC. When you first encounter a strong signal, the AVC is relaxed. So a lot of volume comes out of the speaker. But then within a fraction of a second, whoosh, it knocks it down. It gives you this rushing sound. Whoosh, 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 sound you see. direction. So it's easier to find the null with these. Null appears, appears to be about there. So that means the maximum's at 90 degrees. So there's what you get from this, this guy. 
I really should say this antenna on this radio. Hey, I should tune the radio a bit. So there's noise right next to the station. I'd say that's it. Can't get any better than that. We'll try a different antenna now. So we're going to go from this loop antenna to this loop antenna here. Okay, so we're going to switch the lead. I won't tune the radio now. We're just going to switch the leads. Okay, one loop antenna off. And now the other guy. I've become very impressed with my home built loop antenna from 1977. <laughs> Let me uh, tune it here just like the other one after. Yeah, and then What I hear is a, a little bit more volume and a lot less noise. Let's turn it up a bit here. Well, it's, uh, it's a terrific idea. It's Trouble. a great initiative. I'm not at all surprised <laughs> that uh, it, uh, it, it's a result of something you've uh, you thought of. Uh, anything we can do to help, uh, you've got my number, you've got my email. I do. Give me a call. I do. And uh, we're all behind you. And, uh, okay, we're going to check the uh, dial setting now. I'd say 620 myself. Our hockey broadcasters wanting to get involved in this. It's a terrific initiative. Hopefully somebody will, you know, hopefully somebody will run with this idea. And as I said, anything we can do to help us along the way, we will certainly be there. It's a terrific way of honoring Tyler Bieber. And there's, you know, as Les pointed out, at some point life will return to normal for the humble Broncos. And there will be games played and games to be called. And the person who replaces Tyler Bieber probably be a young person. Maybe somebody just starting out, man or woman, just starting out. Just waiting for them to identify um, the station here. Well, think, think, think how you do it another way. In that particular situation. As I said, anything we can do to help, we are absolutely 100% behind West Lazar. We will take a break when we come back. John Schumann, National Basketball Writer for NBA.com, joins us. The Jeff Blair Show on Sportsnet 590. The 590. So you can see it looks like 620, but we're actually tuned to 590. 
Let's see if we can fix that right now. Okay, I'm gonna tune it the way I want it to go. And then tune the signal back in. So I, this is basically as far as I can get it. The only other way to adjust it now is to change the dial card a bit. Loosen it, loosen it off here on the collar. Change, change the card position a bit. Um, I'm not inclined to do that. I think we'll leave well enough alone here. Oh boy, that sounds bad. Let's go. Okay, now I'm going to turn the antenna here. We have an election coming in the province here, and that's what they're talking about. Still, it's too muffled. So the muffling, it could be the speaker itself just can't just can't reproduce the higher frequencies. Uh, could temporarily put a different speaker on, see what it sounds like. If I wanted to investigate that, if it's the speaker, I can't do anything about it anyway. Um, it seems to me I, I've done enough alignment stuff. It's it's not it's not because the radio's aligned in such a way that there's no trouble. That's possible. It's not. But it sounds pretty good anyway. I mean, you're not likely to listen to this radio uh, at length. Um, this one would be fun at night, uh, particularly to have a loop directional antenna, and you're willing to take the time. So it's going to work fairly well. But again, if you're really into listening to AM radio, you're not going to be using this. You're going to be using a, a modern transistorized one. So where are we on this now? So one thing I've never done, I've never tested the tubes. Um, I'm not inclined to. I don't have replacements for most of these. They're a little bit a little bit scarce. <laughs> They're all working. Why would I bother fooling around with them and just run the risk of bug buggering something up? I think we're done. I think from here, this is going back in the cabinet, but the cabinet, let me turn off the power here. Still a touch of hum. But you know a little bit of hum? A little bit of hum reminds me of home. Yeah. Um, oh, heavens, what was that? To go investigate that boom. Gotta do something about this. This guy here. So um, that's two radios I need to do the grill cloth on. So I'm gonna do them together, I think. Do them both at the same time. A big cardboard sheet back here. Yeah, that's for another day. Uh, so maybe there's two things I can do. One is uh, I can do the grill cloth, take care of all that. But another thing I can do is simply throw all the instrumentation I can at this radio. But you know what? I got other things to do. Okay, I got other things to do. I can hear action upstairs anyway. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next video.